I just got back from this conference in Vegas where they had hundreds, possibly thousands of different companies selling home batteries. Home batteries are the biggest thing out there right now. And I wanted to help you figure out sort of a flow chart, a decision tree, how to decide what kind of battery you should get and what you should look for. So today what I'm gonna do is walk you through all the different options for the different types of batteries and then how I thought about it and how I ended up with my batteries here at my house. As a refresher, I have two Franklin batteries here totaling about 30 kilowatt hours of energy. They have this A gate here with the smart load shedding and it is basically powering my entire house so I can go off grid and save money as well as protect against any types of outages. And yes, my garage is messy. Now compare that to my neighbor here who has two Tesla power walls and the A-gate, very similar, right? We're talking basically a bunch of different white boxes. I also had these at my old house and they worked really well, but there are quite a few differences between these, which are kind of the older models and the Franklin ones here. So we'll get into that later as well. And then to round out my system here, I have my main panel, which has nothing in it except for the EV charger and the sub panel. And the sub panel is one we're going to upgrade very soon because as you can see, it's pretty old and needs to be upgraded. So everything in the house runs off this sub panel. So if you don't have that, it can really add to the cost of getting a battery installed. So we're going to talk through setups like mine, setups like vehicle to grid, as well as this new style of these portable batteries you can use even if you don't have a house, you have a condo or something like that. And let's head in the studio now and go through those details. All right, here in the studio, and I want to create this sort of flow chart here to explain what I think is the decision making process as to which type of battery you should get. But just quickly, there are three main types. You have the mounted one, like I have at my house, or like it has a power wall, which is fixed to your home. The second kind is a portable battery. This is really good if you have like a condo or something where you can't really you know, change the wiring and all that much, but you still want backup power. And then the third one is sort of the new one that everyone is, has these high hopes for, but isn't really a reality yet, and that's vehicle to load, where you have a house and you have an EV that supports this, and then you plug your house into the EV and it powers your home. It actually feeds energy from your vehicle into your house. I'll talk more about that and the challenges with that later, but I wanna go through this decision tree with those three types, which are the main ones you'll find out there. First, I always like to start with what is your goal? So let's start with saving money. Assuming that's your focus, the next question is, do you have time of use rates? Time of use rates are where different times a day you get charged a different amount for your electricity. If the answer is no here, unfortunately, you're not really going to be saving much money. The math on it, it's very tenuous. And so at that point, I would say probably don't get one. But if your focus is backup power, time of use rates kind of don't matter because the whole purpose isn't necessarily to save money, it's just to make sure that if the power does go out that you and your family are secure. And I know for some people that don't have kids or a family or anything else, it may seem odd, like, oh, it's fine if the power goes out. But trust me, when you have kids and you have little ones that rely on things like heating and cooling, it's, it's more important than just comfort. On the saving money track, if you do have time of use rates, then the question becomes, do you have a home or an apartment. So if you have a home, then I think the right answer is going to be a mounted solution. You've got Tesla power walls, you've got Franklin batteries, you've got Blue Eddy, you've got a whole host of them out there. And this is what most companies are trying to sell right now. Now, if you don't have a home, then you have to think about some other type of solution here. So that is where a portable battery comes into play. Now with the portable battery, it's cool because you can actually wheel it around, you can plug it in, you can have it back feed into your panel if you have an electric panel like I do here in my studio, where where we could actually have wired up that battery so if the power goes out it can automatically switch on and this anchor one specifically has a huge amount of power output as well as you can plug things directly into it so even if you don't have it connected to your panel something like this anchor solix battery will work for you and like I said, with all of these solutions here, if you have time of use rates, you can go off grid during the expensive time and have it refill during the cheap time. And you're basically buying low and selling high. It's the right way to do it. So that's a great solution for no matter whether or not you have a home or if you don't own the place that you're in or it's a condo, something where they won't let you really modify the electric panel outside. Now, the other side of this is the backup power. And this is the one where we really don't care. Maybe we don't have time of use rates. It's electricity is cheap. But in the event of an outage, we don't want to be without power. Think like Texas was a couple years ago with their polar vortex where people were burning their furniture to stay warm. It was really crazy situations. 
Now in this situation, it goes back to the same question. Do you own your home or not? If you do, this is where things get kind of interesting because if all you care about is backup power and you don't need it to automatically switch over, you can get a generator, you can get all kinds of other options. But the cool one that everyone's hot on right here is you can power it with your electric vehicle. So as of today, there's really just two systems that I know of that are officially approved. One supports the Nissan Leaf, and the other one is the Ford Intelligent Backup System from Sunrun. And both of these will allow you to plug your vehicle into your an inverter, essentially, and then power potentially your whole home, depending on how big your home is and all the other bits of math there. So that's a cool one. But here's the downside. First off, the Ford Intelligent Backup System is extremely expensive. Quotes I'm seeing from anecdotal evidence I'm seeing here is upwards of $20,000. And even then, it's not an automatic system. You have to actually flip a switch and then control it and turn it on and all that. So if an outage happens, it's not like, bing, everything is automatically back on. You have to go do some work. It could be snowing. It could be more difficult. But the other option here is that you can just build a transfer switch. It's basically like what a regular gas generator would plug into and then power some or all of your home and this is something your electrician can do depending on where you live there may be certain rules or regulations or whatever but to do a transfer switch with a few circuits is way cheaper than any of the other type of vehicle load systems as well as any of the other solutions that we're talking about so if you already have 100 kilowatt hours which is a tremendous amount of energy you can basically just set up a couple things for a couple thousand dollars and you have a backup solution so it's really cool in that regard but it's not perfect because if you want to try to save money with it it's going to be a manual thing your car has to be there it really becomes a challenge to where it's just you know not necessarily as convenient as just having one mounted at that point now another case here is that if all you care about is backup is a portable battery like the solix one from anchor because in that case you can take it with you right if you have a camping trip or something like that you can bring it with you can power all your things you can do all kinds of fun stuff like that but also it has enough output to where you can just run it through a transfer switch as well and have it power your home or some of its essential loads. So that's the simple way to try to pick the right battery. But of course, there's a lot more information that you probably should know. And by popular request, I've actually launched a new video series called the Homeowner's Battery Blueprint. It's a system I created with a whole video series behind it and an ebook that can get you started to really dive in here to make sure that you're getting the most bang for your buck all while protecting your family. I also have an extra bonus in there for the early folks. So check out the link down below for more information. Let me know what you guys think in the comments and I'll see you back here next time.